Hey guys, welcome to Martin's Institute of Teaching. In this video, we're going to be working with um, multiplying. So this is going to be the third video in the series. So here what we're going to do is I'm going to work a little bit more with multiplying. Before, in the previous video, we actually learned how to multiply by 2. But if you only know how to multiply by 2, that kind of leaves out a whole world of odd numbers. So let's get into that. So first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and start writing up this program. We're going to say branch domain. And right away I'm going to create a few variables. So I'm going to say num1. And I'm just call that dot block 2. All that does is it creates a variable of two bytes in memory. So now we're going to create um, num... Actually, I don't, I don't, am I going to use this? Um, yeah, sure, let's use it. So we're going to call that num2, and we're going to say block2. Now we're going to create another variable called result, which will also be a dot block2. So now we're going to go ahead and get straight into the program. So first thing we want to do is we want to get a value. So the first one we're going to grab is num1. So we're going to say deci which means get a decimal in. That's going to be num1. Get that directly. Next thing I'm going to do is I, so for this program, the first thing I want to do is I want to get a number and I want to multiply it by 2. After I multiply it by 2, uh, I'm going to show you how to multiply that same number by 3. So right here we're going to say, uh, first thing is we're going to get, we got the number. Now we need to load it into the accumulator. So we're going to say load accumulator with num1 directly. So here, right away, we're going to multiply it by 2. So we're going to say ASLA, and that's all you need to do. Now we're going to store that value into result. So uh, store the accumulator in result. And we're going to do that directly. Uh, after we do that, we're going to tell the program to stop, because we're done. And then we're going to say dot .end. So let's go ahead and do this program. Let's click Assemble and Run. So first number we're going to put into there is, let's say, 2. So if you put 2 in there, we're going to load it to the accumulator. You're going to get 2, or we're going to load 2 into the number 1. We're going to load that value into the accumulator. We're going to load this value into the accumulator. And then we're going to multiply the value in the accumulator by 2, which is ASLA. And then we're going to store that value into result. Oh, you know what? This I forgot. We need to print that value out. So we're going to do deco result directly. Okay, because if I hadn't put deco or decimal out here, we wouldn't have had a result. So let's go ahead and run this program. So first value we're going to put in is 2. So if we put 2 in there and multiply it by 2, we should get 4 out, which is what we get. Now let's try another value. Let's try 4, 8. Okay, so that's correct. So now we've seen that we can multiply, our program works to multiply by 2. But now let's say we want to multiply by 3. So if we want to multiply by 3, well, how do we do that? Well, I'm going to show you here, and then I'm going to show you a little bit more on the side. So here, uh, actually, uh, no, let, let's first jump over here. So what am I actually doing? So initially, we're getting a value, right? And we're saying get a value, which is deci. And we're putting that into number 1, so num1 and doing it directly. So we're getting some num some value from the user and we're putting it into num1. Now next we're going to load that value into the accumulator. So we're going to say load the accumulator num1 directly. And what happens is here we have the accumulator which is just a register and we're putting num1. First we put in the value 2 into, well we got the value 2 and we put it into num1 and then we loaded that value into the accumulator. So what happens is now this command is actually going to put that value into here, which is 2. After that, we we uh, I think we stored the value. We did store... Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Sorry, brain fart. So let's see. Oh, no, we multiplied it by 2, and then we stored it, and we printed it out. So oh, here you go. Let's erase that. So we got the value, loaded it into the accumulator, and now we're going to go ahead and multiply it by 2, so ASLA. 
And what that did is it came over here into the accumulator, it multiplied two by two, and it left us with four in the accumulator. And then after that, we just printed it out. So after that, we just stored it into a result directly, and then we did deco out and printed out, uh, we printed out result, which is four. But what we want to do is multiply by odd numbers. So actually, what do we do here? So oh, let me go ahead and erase this. We have a problem because, well, if we if we multiply again by Asla, if we do Asla again, and we do the same stuff over here, which is um, uh, which is store that value store the accumulator in result directly and then deco the result directly. If we do that, all if we do ASLA twice, all it's going to do is we bring in 2 in, putting it into the accumulator, we're multiplying it once by 2, which gives us 4, then we're going to do the second one right here, it's going to do 4 times 2 and it's going to give us 8. And that'll be our, our value in there. But we want to do 3 times 3. So we can't do ASL again. We have to do something else. So instead of multiplying it again by 2, we have to actually just increase it by um, by one value of num. So what we actually end up doing instead is we say add to the accumulator num1 directly. So what this ends up actually doing so I'll just start from the very top. We get a value from the user, which is two. We're putting two into num one. That gets placed into the accumulator, so that's two. Next, we're gonna do ASLA, which multiplies the accumulator by two, which ends up giving us four. Next, now we actually add this num, num one, to the accumulator. So we do add, the, add to the accumulator num one. So it's four plus two, which gives us six. Now, uh, 2 times 3 is equal to 6. So what actually ends up happening is what we're doing is we're splitting up this 3. What we're saying is do 2 times 2 plus, well, an instance of 2 in order to get 6. So now let's go ahead and, uh, oh, well, and now let's say we, instead of multiplying by 3, we don't want to do 3. Let's say we want to multiply by 5. Well, how would we do multiply by 5? Let's go ahead and do that right now. So let's say, again, we want to bring in the value 2 into the accumulator. We can bring whatever we want. I'm just using 2 because it's easy. So if we bring 2 into the accumulator, and we want to multiply it by the value 5, well, how would we do that? If we have 5, well, that's kind of the same thing as saying multiply something, multiply x by 2, multiply it again by 2, and then do plus x. So that's what we're doing. So right here, we're going to come over here. We're going to do bring the value in, load it into the accumulator, multiply it by 2, multiply it by 2 again. And now add num1 to it directly. Now, you might be thinking, well, isn't num1 changing? And num1's not changing. What's actually changing is the value inside of the accumulator. And that's not where num1 is stored. Num1 is stored somewhere else. Uh, so that's that's why num1's value isn't changing. That's why we can do this. So we bring 2 into the number 1. We load it into the accumulator. So we put 2 immediately into the accumulator. Let me get rid of this. We have more space. And now we're going to multiply it right here by 2. So we're going to say times 2, which is going to leave us with 4. And then we're going to do the second multiplication, or the second ASLA. So we're going to multiply it by 2 again, which leaves us with 8. And now we're going to actually add to the accumulator num1. And num1 is just saying plus num1. Num1 is the, has the value of 2, so it's 8 plus 2, which leaves us with the value of 10 in the accumulator. And now what we do is we want to get this value out of the accumulator so we can print it out. So then we do store the accumulator in result. Now of course I could go ahead and store 10 
back into num1 if I wanted to. But if I do that, then I'm going to destroy what's ever in num1 now. So I'm, that's why I'm using result just to print out the result. And now that I have result stored, or now that I have the value in the accumulator, which is 10, stored in result, now I can print it out. Then I just say deco result and then directly. So let's go ahead and do that in the actual program. So if we come back in here, we're going to do decimal in number one or num1, and then load the accumulator with num1, multiply it by our do arithmetic shift L, which is left on the accumulator. We're going to do it again, and now we're going to add uh, num1 to the accumulator directly. So let's go ahead and put some comments in here. So this, what this does is get a value uh, from the user, next, Oops. next we're going to load, load num1 into the accumulator, and after we do that, multiply the value in the accumulator, whoops, three C is just one. Ah, so multiply the value in the accumulator by two, or basically double the value in the accumulator, which is what we're doing. So I'm just going to copy that and print it out again, because we're doing it twice. So next, we're going to add to the accumulator. Now, add num1 to accumulator. And here, what we're doing is storing, store the value in the accumulator. I'm just gonna write it like that. Store the value in the accumulator uh, in result. So then after that, print out result. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's assemble this, let's run it. So let's say we're gonna bring in the value five. If we bring in five into the into here, we should get 25 out. So let's say five and 25. Let's run it again. Let's bring in uh, two, multiplying that by five should give us 10. And there's no problem. So, and immediately if I wanna get rid of that and just multiply it, this is what happens if we get rid of it. So now we bring in two, we get eight. So there you go. That, oh, so that's if we wanted to multiply by five. If I wanted to multiply by three, I'm just gonna get rid of this. This right here, so I'm gonna comment it out. That means multiply by two and then add num one to it. So this should multiply by three. Let's go ahead and put two in here. Two times three should give us six. And so we get, let's run it again. Let's say four, four times uh, three, that should give us 12. And there you go. So, all right, I hope this uh, really helped you guys out. So uh, if it did, great. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe and good luck in your classes. And thanks for watching.